Hi folks, I'm Meath with Two Guys Are Riding. Welcome to our car tech video on the BMW X7 50i. Now, uh, I will be covering the driver's information and infotainment screens. I'll do a general overview and show you how to access information and do a deep dive. Let's get started. Today we're working with our friends at Sears Imported Autos selling beautiful Mercedes Benz in Minnetonka, Minnesota. All right, on the driver's information screen, uh, it's a beautiful screen, really is. And it is fully digital, um, but it's not very customizable. Um, what's, what's nice is, well, it's, it's laid out simply so that it's not complicated to go through a whole bunch of menus. Basically, over on the turn signal stock, you have got a button labeled BC. That is gonna change the information you see on the far right window, all right? So this is all the information. Okay. Now, yeah, I, I'm assuming if a call came through, that would also show up on your screen here somewhere. Um, but that, that's it. All right. Now, over on the far left of the window, you have your speed in both miles per hour and kilometers per hour. And if you hit the mode button... Oh, I got to turn the uh, cruise control on, which it won't want to come on here, but I think I can. There, I can go between distance control and assisted driving assistance. And then those things will show up on this side of the screen. But basically, that's it. Now, if your navigation is running, you do see um, that screen is in the background all the time. Uh, so your navigation turn by turn will all show up there. Uh, so you've got all the information you could possibly want. It's just made simple. Speedometer on the left, RPM on the right. I like how it runs in reverse, the RPM gauge. You have got um, your miles per gallon over on the far right. Your, your driver assist on the left. And then, of course, you've got a speed limit reading sign on. you got your distance to empty down below. you got your fuel gauge on the far left. Clock, seatbelt indicator, the actual road that you're on, what mode you're in, what gear you're in, and then, of course, um, the temperature outside. And then on the very, very far right, you've got your engine temperature gauge. But simply laid out, well done. Um, it, the graphics on it are, are really nice. Um, all right, but that is it uh, on the driver's information screen. So next, we're going to move over to the infotainment screen. All right, so the infotainment screen is 12 inches uh, as measured diagonally, and it does ha it is a touch screen, but it does also have a, like a command control uh, center down in the center console where you've got the rotary knob with the four arrows, and then you've got shortcuts for media, uh, communication, home, uh, uh, Wi-Fi, and then map and nav, and then a back, and then an option button. Uh, however, I, for the most part, I'm simply going to be using the touch screen because I just think it's easier to use. All right, so this is our home screen right here. You'll notice that there are three dots right beside the home screen. And these are ones that you can customize. So if I swipe to the left, there's one set of screens that has been customized. So this piece of data, that and that were all chosen. Here's another one uh, right here, with just one, two, and three screens. And then here's another one, okay? So I go back here and I click on that button up there, then I can edit the page. So right now I'm actually on the home page. I'm on edit page one. So I don't want to edit that particular page. So I'm gonna click done. I'm gonna go to this page. So you go to whatever page you wanna edit now I can say, well, I don't want that. I don't want, but I want that one. And I don't want that one. I want this one to be bigger. Okay, so now it becomes a big square. And now I want this one to be smaller. And I get two pieces of information here. So I go right there. I'm gonna select media and radio. And then I'm gonna go right here. You can scroll through. I'm going to see maybe a map view, okay? A map as in navigation, yes. I, I want to see exactly what would be in navigation. So there we go. I click done, and there's my screen. 
So not only can you pick the size, but you can pick the content. And then you can do that for basically four screens, which I just think is awesome. You can have four main screens set up as home screens. All right, now you'll notice the Apple CarPlay icon up. That's because I've already hooked my phone to Apple CarPlay. If you had yours hooked to Android Auto, that would show up there. It is a wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. It also has, of course, AM and FM, and Sirius XM, HD radio, and Bluetooth. Now, yeah, oh, also, and navigation, built-in navigation. Okay, so this is the home screen. So uh, your, your basic apps are right here on the left. You've got then the split window, which I already showed you how to customize. You notice the screen is touch sent or uh, proximity sensitive. So it'll come up anytime your hand comes close enough, it'll bring up any additional menus. And when your hand pulls away, this that all goes away. It just gives you more to view uh, on the screen. Anything you click on here goes to full screen. So if I click this, it goes to full screen. And it goes right to Apple CarPlay because that's what my phone is using. If I hit communication, okay, I can go right here and then it'll go right to my phone. All right, so let's go back to media. Uh, all right, so right here, you got Spotify that's built in, you got uh, your music collection, Bluetooth audio, screen mirroring, Apple CarPlay, mobile devices, and then personal, personalize the menu. So for me, um, I have, of course, have got um, Apple CarPlay. So let's just click on that, and we'll talk about that for a minute. Here we go. So yeah, in Apple CarPlay, you do get kind of a split home screen. It's going to show you one of your navigation maps, whatever is currently using. If it's Apple Maps, it'll show you there. If it's Google Maps, well, it'll show you that. You've got a button up here that sometimes has a microphone and the home button or a go button. It depends on what map you're using. But basically, it's a preset button that'll take you to your house. And then you've got media. If you click on any one of these, they become full screen. Right? So if you don't like the navigation the vehicle comes with, you can always use um, the navigation that comes with Apple. You're on your phone. Um, and you can use almost any navigation app and it will work. These three up here are the most recently used icons. It just places them there automatically. Of course, you get a battery symbol, you get your Wi-Fi signal, and then a clock. Now, I can either click on this or swipe, either way, but here are all the apps from my phone that will work. So I got, you know, I got Waze there, I've got Google Maps there, got Apple Maps, I've got Apple Music, I've got Amazon Music, Sirius XM, Pandora right there. So lots of, lots of um, apps from your phone that'll work directly with the system. Now, if I press on the phone itself, I can look at favorites, recents, contacts, I can pull up my keypad, I can go listen to voicemail. It will also, uh, via Siri or Google Assistant, if you get a text, It'll notify you that you have a text, and then without pushing any button, you just answer the questions. Would you like me to read the text? Yes. Okay. It'll read the text. Would you like to respond? Yes. And then what would you like to say? And then you say it, and then it repeats it back to you. Then it asks you if you want to send it, and you say yes, but you can do all of that hands-free. So I absolutely love Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. I um, think it's just awesome. Okay. Now, let's take and go back to the home button. I'm gonna use the home button down below the physical home button on the center console. So, back to media for a minute. Now, if I scroll up, let's take a look at SiriusXM. Okay, let's talk about um, how to add a preset. So, basically, you're just gonna to go to a station right here let's just say go add to presets and it's done now it's added to presets okay uh, you can also say if this was a preset you could say delete presets and it would take it out you can say add to favorites okay I'm gonna add this one 
That's the one I was on. Joe, wherever it was. Okay, now, oh, there it is. Uh, so, you can also go to sound settings. So here you can suggest your, adjust your surround, your treble, your bass, balance, fader, equalizer. Now for that, you need to click on another button and you have your graphic equalizer here. I'm a little surprised they don't actually show you the frequencies. That, that would really be nice, but you do get a nice little graphic display and you know, this would be your lower and these would be your higher frequencies. Um, I don't think, oh, oh, there it does. Now it lists it, so I just have to move it first before it will list. Okay, I get it. But then you get a nice little graphic. Somebody's gonna get a really nice uh, EQ setting. Volume settings, okay? Speed dependent volume, the faster you go, the louder the sound is in the car. And the slower you go, the lower it is. Now, does it sound louder to you when you're driving? No, what it sounds like is that the volume stays exactly the same. It's just compensating for road noise. Um, now, parking distance control volume. You can set that to be louder or softer. And then you have a gong sound for messages. So there's a minute difference between the, the, the very soft and the very loud uh, on there. Not a huge amount of difference, but you can make some adjustments. Down here, um, if you want the touch, touch screen, the touchpad, and gestures, okay, to, to like beep or make a sound, then you can have that check mark. If you don't want those beeping at you, take them off. Okay, that doesn't turn gestures off, it just turns off the signal, like it beeps at you. So, cars do a lot of beeping at you, and sometimes it's nice not to have those. All right, so you know how to um, set a preset, you know how to save a favorite so let's talk about how to tune well down below there are physical buttons and there's a there's a right arrow and a left arrow so if you do this you can just it's the same as this guy clicking through the list you see on the list but it's going channel by channel so you are tuning channel by channel now if you want to look at a category you can go over here and go to this category and say i want to look at say all categories so the infotainment system does have gesture control, but it's a little bit like learning sign language. You have to make the right and appropriate adjustment or appropriate hand for everything like this. Since now I'm changing channels. For me, it was just easier to use the, the, the buttons down here, but it's there and it's nice that, you know, the, the different ways you hold your hand will create uh, a different interaction with the system. So, all right, um, but that, that's how you're gonna tune. Okay, now let's take a look um, at uh, FM radio. FM radio is gonna be a little bit different. Uh, in addition to having add something to presets right there, I can do a manual search right here and now I can use, probably just, I can use my finger, probably easier in this case to use the rotary dial down below. Hey, okay, but you can find something, click on it, you can make it a favorite if you want. You can actually switch right here and go into AM, which is kind of a cool feature. Uh, not that many people use AM anymore, but it's nice that they make it easy to flip between them. I'm gonna go back here. And of course you can go to sound settings. So this is very, very similar to Sirius XM except for the manual search button. All right, I can go to AM radio and it's gonna look exactly the same. So, you know, new cars try to set them up as much as possible so that AM, FM, and XM all look and function the same, except for the little details that are specific to each one. All right, so here we go. Um, we're gonna go back to home, navigation. Okay, so you can set a home address, look at recent destination, look at maps in CarPlay, which is the first time I've ever seen an option to switch right into to CarPlay. That is kind of a cool thing. So I'm gonna go back to navigation for a minute. I just pressed the navigation button in, in uh, center console. And you can look at, of course, ports of points of interest, receive destinations, GPS coordinates, and then you can personalize the menu. On the far right, you've got traffic info, uh, the map themes, the map settings, that kind of, 
that kind of stuff. So this is this kind of stuff down here is more or less one-time settings. Traffic info you might want to have on all time, and then these, of course, are like you probably would want to look at them every you know depending on what you're searching for. If I hit personalize menu, you can have classic input, home, favorites, points of interest, contacts, all these things. So you probably want to have home because that way your home button appears, you set it as your home address, you just click it or say it and it goes. Um, you can look at your contacts here from your cell phone. If they have an address with them, you can plot an address in your uh, navigation by using a contact from your phone. And I'm gonna go back here. If I go here and I have traffic info, here it is, just it lists it for me. And if I go back here and I click on theme map, well, uh, do I want a gas station map? Which is kind of what I have there. Um, and uh, so I can search for a gas station and then click on it and go to it. I can look for a place to stop and then it asks me coffee shops, food and drink, fuel stations, that kind of stuff. Um, quite honestly, the easiest way to use this is voice command no matter what it is you want to do with it. So I'm going to go back to navigation here for a minute, and I'm going to use the uh, microphone button on the right side of the steering wheel, and I would like a coffee. So, what coffee shops are within my range? I have found several destinations. Which one should I select? Okay, number one. I've selected Starbucks. Should I start the guidance? Yes. I've started guidance. Okay. I don't know if you noticed, but the way I asked for that was really sloppy. So this system is quite intuitive as to interpreting what you want. Uh, it found me exactly what I wanted. I didn't have to go through any of the menus on the screen. I just told the car what I wanted. And now it's found and I plotted and I did it all without looking or at the screen. Um, my navigation also shows up, of course, in my driver's information screen. All right, once the route's plotted, the, the obvious question is how do you cancel? Well, if I bring my hand up to the screen, I'm right at the top here, and if you don't see that, just kind of got to scroll down to get to the top menu, hit cancel route. But honestly, you can just use voice command and click the button, let it go. When it beeps at you, say cancel route. So that is really the easiest way to do that. Now, so what I want to show you is how do you make some of these one-time settings? So if I go in here, again, the theme map, um, map settings right here, map perspective. If I click on here, I can change. I want it to, the map to orientate itself in the, in the direction of travel facing north. A perspective and then I in zoom behavior do I want it to auto zoom or manual zoom or route overview difference is on auto zoom as soon as you come to a turn it's automatically going to zoom in and show you the streets as being much bigger giving you a clearer view of what you got at uh, the street you got to maneuver manual zoom you're gonna have to go in there and pinch on every turn route overview keeps it way out and just kind of gives you a basic uh, like from a mile up in space. So you're really not going to see every single turn or, you know, before you get to it. So I always like leaving mine on auto zoom. Map contents. Do you want it to show points of interest like uh, coffee places and, and gas stations, that kind of stuff? Do you want it to show traffic flow or traffic events? If you don't want any of those, just on check it. All right. Uh, traffic lights. Do you want to see 3D buildings, satellite images? And then you can go to additional settings. Okay, parking and refuel suggestions. You can have that on or off. Reduced mode and points of interest on the map. If I click that, I can select what shows up in my map. Like for instance, maybe I want food and drink. Then it will ask me what kind. So then you can go through here. Um, you can go through here and say, well, I want to select certain ones. Like I just want breakfast places or I want everything. Well, if you do that, your map's going to get a little crowded, but the point is, then when you have your map on, I'll press the nav button here in a minute, they're going to show up. 
They're going to show up automatically wherever you're driving, doesn't matter what state. If it sees those kind of items, it's going to pop them up in your map. You can click on them and then you can navigate to them. But this is where you make those, those, those settings. You can manually add a stop. You can look at alternative routes. You do a route preview. And then, of course, if you go into settings, um, this is a, another spot where you can make some uh, one-time changes, route preferences. Do I, do I want to use highways or avoid them? Toll roads. Do I want to have a toll tag or avoid or cash only? Please proceed to the highlighted route. <laughs> you ferries, that kind of stuff. You can make these changes. But again, pretty much they're one-time changes. You can look at guidance settings. Do you want a 3D intersection view, additional information, and display of traffic flow on route? Okay? And then you can look at uh, the, the update and see what version you currently have to see if there's an update available. All right, so that's the basics of navigation. Now, you notice this little um, tab sticking down. If I pull on that, you get a little menu that's... That gives you some main things like adjust main menu, go to Apple CarPlay, but it gives you something specific to the app you're in, and that's, in this case, cancel route. Okay. Um, now, uh, let's go back to the home screen. So I'm going to press the home button right here on the uh, center console. We're going to go down on car. So in car, under driving information, you get these icons, right? So if I click on this one, I get trip data. If I click on that, I can select, I want values displayed since the start of trip, since refueling uh, from the factory, individual, and reset individual. So that's probably the one you're going to use most often. I can look at sport displays. This is kind of cool. You got your, um, this would be your, your PSI for your turbo. This is your oil temperature, your horsepower, and your torque. And then a G-force meter. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of cool with everything they put in there. Um, let's see. Let's go back. All right. X-View. Well, this is going to be for some off-roading information. So, you get your degree of incline, your degree of pitch, your compass heading, and then this graphic, which will move with the car. And then you get your height setting. And that height control could be set either by the drive mode you're in or you have a physical button in the center console that will raise and lower it. All right, I'm going to go back. Energy flow. If you want to look at where power is going to, then you can use that screen. And it'll show you. All right, so that was driving information. Let's take a look at vehicle status. Okay, tire pressure. Good. Tells you the, 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 all the settings. You can look at engine oil level. It says it's okay. You can check for any messages. And then you can look at the service schedule. And it'll tell you for brake fluid, engine oil, and then a general vehicle check when it's due. Under settings, uh, you got displays. So your head-up display, you can have it show, uh, let's, let's scroll to the top, first of all. First of all, you can turn the heads-up display off. I would suggest leaving it on. I, I think that's the, one of the best inventions uh, people, automotive industry has made in, in a long time. So, um, so I can just use this and adjust the height. It's, it's, it's a fairly large screen. I'm going to say it's close to... It would be about a, almost a 15-inch display. Um, it sits right off the end of your hood. But that's your height adjustment. You can rotate it. Okay. Now, you may say, and, and when you do this, you actually want to watch the HUD through the windshield so you know. And you may ask, what, what's, why are, would you want to rotate it? Well, everyone sits differently in the seat. So some sli sli sit slightly to the left, some sit slightly to the right. And then having that rotation allows you to balance the head out so it looks straight interior lighting all right it has ambient lighting so um, right now if I click on here I have choices of bronze bronze and white all the way down to purple and then I guess I have lilac and white as well so you can uh, 
it's, it's in the doors. You can see it, but it's not real bright out because it's daylight right now. Um, but, but it's in a number of different places. You can see right on the graphic where it is. So it's nice so that they give you uh, uh, some adjustments that you can make depending on your mood. All right, you can also turn ambient lighting completely off or, or say dimmed for night driving. All right, so let's go back here for a minute. There's so many things. You have experience modes. All right, let's try executive. So in executive mode, what's happening is that the rear window shades are going up, the climate control adjusted, and then the window shade is a, the panoramic, sun, panoramic sunroof shade adjusts, and so does the ambient lighting. So I, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. All right, let's go back to car here in a minute. If I go into driver profiles, this is actually set up as a guest, but this is where you can go in and create your profile so that your, your steering wheel and your favorites and the climate and the seats all adjust when it senses uh, who you are. You can create an avatar. Um, you can look at driver recognition, add a driver profile. Lots of different ways uh, for the car to recognize you as you know who you are and make the appropriate settings. All right, of course, then you got uh, oh, um, um, owner's manuals. You can look at that are built in. I also think it's just easier to watch one of our videos, uh, but they're there and you have some regulatory notes. Okay, so um, if I go back to home for a minute, that was car. If I look at the last one here, and this just shows us the installed apps that are on there. Uh, and you have some ones, this, this is your voice command. Uh, you do have weather which is nice. So you can go here and you're actually gonna get a weather printout for where you currently are. So the, the last thing I'm gonna show up here is the backup cameras. So, and actually all the cameras. So let's just go into reverse for a minute. Okay, so in reverse here, because you've got your dynamic swivel guidelines right here. And you, of course, got a bird's eye view over there. You've got some sensors over here, kind of warning you're close to things. So now I'm going to put it into drive. And you notice the camera here doesn't change. But I can go up here, click the car, click the camera, and change the angle. What happens, though, is you watch as I approach this curb. It's actually kind of cool. Uh, let's see. It's going to... Oh. Look at that. So I've got some sensors showing up that are saying you're getting pretty close. Okay. Um, if, oh, see, there's the view I'm talking about. See, now, you see those little um, orange warnings for the perimeter? Okay, if I, if I go like this, I mean, they look like they are 3D guards standing up in front of the car. I mean, it's just, I don't think you'll see it from this angle, but I love how you can still see the guidance, the dynamic swivel. Look at that right up in there i mean that is just pretty cool so but the point is you've got several views that you can use uh and you can look at um in the camera mode uh if you, and you again and you can have an automated parking turned on backup assistant turned on and then if you go to camera image you can say i can adjust the brightness the contrast i can turn it on or off the parking aid lines or park uh on or off the obstacle markings and if i go to settings then I can make some additional settings right here. So, I mean, it's just, it's a very nice camera, and I love that they take up, you know, basically the entire screen um, when they when they're, have the cameras up, which is really, really nice. So that, that's it on the BMW X7 uh, 50i. And um, don't forget to click the subscribe button down below and hit that bell notification up above so you never miss one of our videos. Thanks for watching.